Before continuing further, make sure you know the definitions of a system, external force, inertia, and centripetal force, how to draw a free body diagram, and how to apply Newton's three laws of motion. In the last episode, Brooke assembled the gang for a big day out. As the journey continues, Ian hammers out 101 questions, but Brooke doesn't confirm anything. Without any warning, the light changes yellow and Sal slams on the brakes. Everyone jerks forward as the car screeches to a halt. Let's stop here to identify all of the external forces acting on Brooke as observed from inside the car. Her weight is balanced by an upward normal force from the seat. When the car brakes, Brooke is pushed forward. This is balanced by a pulling force from the seatbelt and friction from the seat. Here's the catch. Four of these forces are real and one of them is fake. Can you spot the odd one out? Write down your answer because we'll come back to this later. Previously, we defined inertia as an object's resistance to acceleration. Objects have a natural tendency to travel at a constant velocity, and they will remain in this natural state unless acted upon by a net external force. A frame of reference is a coordinate system that is used for making observations and taking measurements. An inertial frame of reference moves with a constant speed and direction. In comparison, a non-inertial frame of reference accelerates, meaning that its speed and or direction changes. A real force can be observed in all frames of reference. It is a push or pull that occurs when two objects interact. For example, a dynamic friction force occurs when two objects rub against each other. On the other hand, a fictitious force, or pseudo-force, can only be observed in a non-inertial frame of reference. It is an apparent push or pull caused by an interaction between the object's inertia and the accelerating frame of reference. Let's return to the original scenario. Since the car slows down, it is an accelerating or non-inertial frame of reference. The weight force occurs when Brooke interacts with the Earth. Since there are two objects involved, it is a real force. The pulling force occurs when Brooke interacts with the seatbelt, so it is a real force. The normal force occurs when Brooke interacts with the car seat, so it is a real force. Likewise, friction from the seat is a real force. By the process of elimination, the push is the fictitious force. Hang on, this doesn't sound right. When a car brakes, you definitely feel a forward push, so it must be real. To try and clear things up, let's switch to the viewpoint in which the ground and traffic light are stationary. This is a non-accelerating or inertial frame of reference. Brooke has mass and inertia, which is a natural tendency to maintain a constant velocity. If she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, she would continue moving forward. Thankfully, Brooke is attached to the car, so she comes to a complete stop and her acceleration is 8 metres per second squared backward. By Newton's first law, this acceleration is caused by a net external force. Newton's second law tells us that the net external force is 600 newtons backward. As shown in this free body diagram, the net external force is caused by the pull from the seatbelt and friction from the seat. To summarise, Brooke feels like she is pushed forward, but this is the opposite of reality because the pushing force is not real. Now, let's return to the viewpoint inside the car. 
before they started breaking, Brooke experienced a weight force and normal force only. When the driver pressed the brakes, friction at the wheels made the car slow down. Some of this force was transmitted to her body through the seat and seatbelt. The forward push is fabricated to counteract the forces from the seat and seatbelt. In this viewpoint, there appears to be no net external force, and Brooke appears stationary, even though she accelerates relative to the ground. But why does she feel this fictitious force? Brooke has mass and inertia, so her body wants to maintain a constant velocity of 15 metres per second forward. This contradicts the motion of the car, which slows down. Therefore, she appears to be pushed forward because her inertia interacts with the accelerating frame of reference. To recap, real forces are observed in all frames of reference. On the other hand, fictitious forces only occur in non-inertial frames of reference to counteract the frame's acceleration. For this reason, it is easier to analyse motion and forces in an inertial frame of reference.